In the previous two videos, we learned about parallel queries. The nice thing about parallel queries is that they can be executed in parallel so as to maximize fetching concurrency. However, you're also going to come across scenarios where you need the queries to execute sequentially. That is, one after the other. And the situation arises when you have one query dependent on the results of another query. Let's see how to address dependent queries in this video. Once again, I've done some code setup that I would like to walk you through. In the components folder, I have created a new file called dependentqueries.page.js. It is a very simple component that renders some text. The component is configured with a route in app.js. The path is rq-dependent and the component, as you can see, receives an email prop. In a real-world application, email might be provided using the context API, but to keep this simple, let's assume we have access to the logged in user's email and we are passing that into the component as a prop. The email is vishwas at example.com. We also need some data for this example, so I have extended the JSON in db.json file. We now have a users array, which contains one user. The ID is the user's email, and we have another property called channel ID. This is set to code evolution. We also have a channels array, which contains one object. The ID is code evolution, and we have a courses property set to an array of strings, React, Vue, and Angular. If you've understood the setup, let me now tell you the requirement. In dependent queries page, we need to fetch the list of courses for the email vishwas at example.com. Now this would require two steps. First, we query for the user whose email is vishwas at example.com. Then, using the channel ID associated with the user, we need to fire a second query and fetch the channel details where the ID matches the user's channel ID. Since we can't fetch the channel details till we fetch the user details, this is an example of dependent queries. And if you ask me, it is a pretty common requirement in large-scale applications. Let's learn how to do this with React Query. For step one, we need to fetch the user using the email prop. At the top, make the necessary imports. So import use query from React Query and Axios from Axios. Next, define the fetcher function. const fetch user by email and this function is going to receive the email as a parameter and within the function body, we return axios.get and the URL is localhost 4000 slash users slash email. This request will fetch the object in the user's array. Next, destructure email from component props and within the component, call use query. The query key can be the string user with email as the second element. The fetcher function is fetch user by email, which is our second argument to use query. And we call this function passing in the email prop. So this is now an arrow function which accepts the email. The query is going to return data which we can alias as user. Now I'm not going to destructure loading or error flags since I won't be writing any JSX. That will be an exercise for you when we are done with this video. 
And once we have the user, we can access the channel ID property. So const channel ID is equal to if the user exists, access data dot channel ID. Here, user refers to the API response and on the response, we access data which refers to the object present in db.json. On this object, we access channel ID. We also have to keep in mind that user is not immediately available and takes time to load. Hence, the optional chaining. So this is our step one, getting hold of channel ID based on user ID or user email in this case. For step two, we use this channel ID to fetch the channel courses. Let's begin with the fetcher function. So outside the component, const fetch courses by channel ID and this will receive channel ID as a parameter. And we are going to make a request and return axios.get and the URL is localhost 4000 slash channels slash channel ID. Within the component, we invoke use query again. So use query, the query key can be courses with the channel ID and the fetcher function fetch courses by channel ID passing in channel ID. But as it stands, this query will be fired as soon as the component mounts and the channel ID would be equal to undefined. However, we want the query to be fired only after the channel ID has been retrieved. And for that, we go back to the enabled property we had learned a few videos earlier. So as the third argument, we specify our configuration object and we set enabled to double negation of channel ID. Double negation converts the value to a boolean which is what the enabled property expects. So all we are saying is only after the channel ID has been retrieved, fetch the channel details. Let's save the file and head to the browser to see if this works as expected. Navigate to localhost 3000 slash RQ hyphen dependent. And right away, we see three queries in the dev tools. First, let's take a look at courses and null. Initially, channel ID is not set, but React query does track that such a query exists when the component mounts, but it tags the query as disabled. If you look at the query explorer and inspect the query state, the status is idle. So a network request is not triggered when channel ID is not set. Of course, at the same time, the user query is fired and we can see the data returned. We have the channel ID. This is now used to make a GET request to fetch the channel details and the courses are retrieved which can be displayed in the browser. This is pretty much how you handle dependent queries with React Query. As practice assignment, make sure you render the list of courses in the JSX. All right then, thank you all for watching. Do leave a like if you're finding the content useful and I'll see you in the next video.